welcome back. This is Phil Beckwith, the professional decorator. Um, something we're going to talk about today, taping up. I know a lot of you don't like taping up, uh, but it's one of those jobs that, particularly when you're spraying, it's a godsend that if you tape up well, the job's going to be a lot better for you um, in the long run. Uh, keeps stuff cleaner and it makes um, the finish look a lot better when you've got a nice taped edge that you pull back. Uh, leaves a crisp line. Um, quick examples of what I've done before I show you what I'm actually doing in another room. I'll just pan around. This is a room I'm working on today. It's um, been a bit of an awkward one because we were here back in about October time and um, the customer had painted the ceiling over bare new plaster and they'd used contract mat emulsion. You can imagine it. New roller. Just brushed it straight on, didn't thin it. Um, very orange peely, um, I don't want to say anymore. So what we did back last year, because it looked a bit uneven, we just came in and put a, a one coat of our Optiva paint straight across the top to try and make it look a little bit better. Once light started getting fitted and other bits and pieces, the ceiling still didn't look any better. You could see slight banding because of the emulsion previously had dried left ridges, we weren't happy with it. We knew we were going to be coming back because we'd got the woodwork to do. Uh, and we said we'd redo it again. Obviously it's a bit of an extra, but it needs doing. It's also got damaged, which um, we can't accept that. So we're obviously redoing the ceiling and we're back onto the woodwork. Now the woodwork, uh, can we see? The woodwork's been done. And then there's been a, if you can see under the bagging, there's been a polished plaster finish put on, which I'm not saying I'm too annoyed about, but really it would have been better if the skirtings had all been put on. There's another one there. Skirtings have all been put on, and then we'd have painted all the woodwork, finished the ceilings. The chap who's done a great job with the polished plaster, he could have then just protected the ceilings like I protected his work, protected the woodwork, and um, we won't be coming back doing so much taping up bagging and redoing everything. It's a little bit back to front, but it is what it is. And I look upon it is that it's as if you're going into a room that's been done years ago and you're coming into a, an occupied house that you're having to make do with what's in. But as I spin round, you'll see what this room's like. We've read on the ceiling, light fittings are hanging, where I've got bagging on the walls. That's where the polished plaster is. I've taken them all up round the edges bagged it all over and protected it and then we've sprayed. We've done one coat of the um, Helmi undercoat, Ticarilla, there's the primer, nibbed it all down, filled it, because don't forget, always fill and cork after you've primed it. Don't do it, don't do it before you've primed it on bare wood, always do it after you've primed it because you'll see where you need to fill. You can sand it down nicely. If anything needs spot priming, you can do, that's not a problem. But with this, because we've sprayed it, what we've done is got one coat on of the primer and then it's had two coats of the um, top coat, which is a lovely green colour. You can see that going all the way around. Now the walls where I've just practiced with my spray fan, obviously this is practicing with the spray fan when I've done the ceiling. Um, these walls are gonna just, we're just gonna put a coat of emulsion over those. We didn't know they were being left. So what we'll do, we'll just put a coat of emulsion over those just to tidy them up because they're going to be headboards going across them and also across here there's going to be um, wardrobe so it's not too detrimental just to have a coat of emulsion just to tidy them up. But yeah, this room we've got to get done um, because come Monday next week um, there's fitted wardrobes going across that back wall there. You can see that back wall across there and then across there. So all being well, well done. But what I'm going to talk to you now about is the taping up that I'm doing. So you see the taping up that's done in there. We're going to lose the light because we'll see if we can get the light on. The fancy lights look changing colour. Well anyway, this is, oh we've got some light. This is a wall I've just done now and I'm going to talk you through the process of what I do to get a wall taped up like this ready for spraying. Again, this is another ceiling that we're going to murk down, just try and improve it and then finish it. All these ceilings are being finished with um, Anti-Reflex 2 and they've been mixed up to a Farrow and Ball colour, which is only a light colour, it's called All White. So actually there's not much differential 
difference between a white, an ordinary white that you, you and I had known, and a, a mixed up colour of all white of Far and Ball done in the Anti Reflex 2. But as a ceiling paint, Anti Reflex 2 is brilliant. It's, it hides a multitude of sins. I don't know whether you'll see it if I get a bit more light across it. It's not a good one when you get lights across it. But that's, an, that's for another day. Right, back to the taping. You'll see what I've done here. I've typed up around the air conditioning unit. I've used paper, whoops, I've used paper um, roll with the tape on, which I've got one here. It's one of the 3M hand maskers. If you haven't got one, buy one. They're, they're brilliant. I've done all the skirting all around the floor. It saves so much time. People will say, oh yeah, it takes hours to tape up a room. Yeah, it might take a few hours to tape up a room properly like this. But on an ordinary room, it might only take you half an hour to tape it up. And what you'll save with spraying and taping is, is just worth it to you. Uh, again, we've spoke about this before financially and obviously quality of lifetime. If you're not working a full day because you've got taped up and you've sprayed a lot quicker than brushing and rolling, well, you can sit at home at four o'clock instead of half past five. And that's what it's all about. You've got to, well, work smarter and not harder. So I'll do your basic wall because you'll get the idea of what we're doing. I'm going to spin you around. Again we've got polished plaster. I'm just going to put you on here and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll try and focus you a little bit better. Can you focus? Yeah. I'll just prop you just there. So if you can see me, I've got tape. I'm using the, I'm using the Q1 tape. This is the painter painting and renovation tape. It's I call it the mid. I call it the middle one because they do a soft one, um, which is the um, oh well, a really soft one is the purple one, which is the delicate one. Then they do well. I think this might be more like a masking tape actually, because they do this yellow one. They do an orange one, which is a bit more delicate, and then they do a purple one that's um, for fine finish, going over wallpapers. I find this one grips a lot better because we're going over a, a bit of an unusual surface around there. I've tried the orangey looking one which is more of the precision tape but once you get some spray on it it seems to crinkle up and not want to stick to the surface. You'll probably tell me in the comments below that there are different tapes that are more suitable which would be quite handy if you want to just comment on that but for now this is what I've got. I've got the Q1 tapes. Um, don't really have any problems with them, it's just knowing which tape you need. So for now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tape around the edges first with the polished plaster because I found it easier to tape up with a roll of tape before I use the hand masker. That way, if the walls are running out slightly, I'm only using an inch worth of tape that I've got to adjust over the surface. So I'll come across there now, across the top, and I'll show you how I do it. So let's try and do this quickly. I'll over engineer it so you can actually see what I'm doing. And while I've just got you here, I'll just show you what you do when you come into an angle. Now, if you see the flat edge there, let's try and get you focused in. If you're coming up to a left angle or a right angle, you just rip your tape on a different angle. So that'll get me into a corner that way. Can you see? We've got a corner that way. If I rip it that way, I've got another corner. So you can rip You'll get into this, you'll rip your tape either on the left side or the right side. So if you rip it on the left side, that'll get me into a corner like that. If I rip it on the right side, that'll get me into a corner the other way. So that's just a, a little tip. You might already know it, you might not, but you don't have to be using a knife. You can just rip it with your fingers. And that corner there is enough to get into the angles of your skirtings. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm using that as a right hand corner. You see me? Yeah.
So I've done across the bottom, I've pushed it in, and that's what I can tape up against. The top now, I'm gonna do the same with the top. I'm gonna rip, I'm gonna rip off the left hand side to get a corner. Let's try and get you. Yeah. I'm ripping off for a left hand corner. Got it there. Get as close as you can to where you need. Put in the polished plaster. I really look to be on a step up with it. I'm going to show you what to do. I'm going straight across there. So it's bending out, so I'm just forcing it up where I need it. So that's that. And now I've got plastic sheet on a roll with the tape, still the yellow tape. And this, another 3M, you pull it off, then when you want to rip it off, you pull it down, keep the pressure all the way down, and it rips it off neatly. Then this just drops down, and it's static clean, so you see that. Move it to there. And because I've already got the tape edge there, all I'm needing to do is just offer it onto that. You can just wrap it round slightly because you're going to come round to the other corner. All the way across. Allow a little bit extra because you want to overlap onto the other wall. And I'm carefully pulling it. And I've got a neat edge there. Can you see the neat edge? Pushing it all the way down. I'll just bring it on now. So we've got it on. We've just overlapped it into the corner. I'll just grab it from behind. And then you'll see the static cling. How the static cling wants to put it straight onto the wall. I could really do it. Got a pair of hands to hold the camera while I'm doing it. So it's all the way down, you get the idea. It's just pulled off there. Not worried about that. Let's see, that'll just see. No, it's just wrapping around. So I'll just put you back on the bench. Now this is an eight foot drop sheet, so the excess that you don't want, pull it down, and if you've got too much down, just roll it back up on yourself, flop it all up, flop it all up like a wedding dress, and then just take down what you need. Put it down with your fingers, just wipe your fingers so you're sticking to it, pull it down, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get enough that it's near that yellow tape and I'm going to retake that edge. And that just takes it, that just takes it in place. So that's down, make it sure it's all the way down. And that's basically how to tape up a wall using the drop plastic and the yellow tape that I've got on there using the hand masker. I'll try and focus you in a bit. Can I get your focus? Yeah. So if there's any comments, if you think I'm doing it wrong, comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you like. Give us a thumb down if you don't, it doesn't matter. Obviously press that bell if I've got a bell. 
and um, comments and subscribe. And for now, that's just basically how I tape up a wall on a room like this where I'm going to be spraying. Now the principle for everywhere else is the same. You'll see that's a bit of an awkward ceiling. How I'm doing that is actually I'm getting the top of the tape, this, I'm hanging it from the bottom and working up and then it's easier to shape the bottom of the bagging into the angles and tape it up. And then any smaller areas like you've seen over there, I've just done it with the paper on the roll and that's good to have. So working the two is a good idea to have two lots of paper and drop bagging. But again, we'll say over and out, and we'll see you can see me under one of these lights. Oh, look at that moody arty shot, look. Oh yeah, brilliant. So over and out, thumbs up, comments, subscribe, bell, everything, and thanks for listening. And um, the next time you'll see me, I'll be talking about spraying this ceiling and the process of doing that, and obviously the woodwork. But let's call it a day for now, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheerio, bye. Hi, we're back. This is part two um, after I've just um, done the last video about taping up. It's a bit tight again, need to adjust. Um, after I spoke to you last time, I finished all the taping up. You see, paper going around, all the bagging went everywhere, over the window, everything. Redid the lights. Don't forget, I said we'd already done this room ceiling um, back in October last year. and. Um, Things have been moved, things have been filled, so it's been redone. So what I've done since I've last spoke to you, I finished off all the bagging and masking, did all this all on the walls. Now I've got my little GXFF for the fine finishing. So what I've done, we're coming up to dinner. Uh, I've just got a, a coat on all the woodwork. This is Helmy undercoat, and I've put it through a gold Tri-Tech tip, a 310, that flows nicely, a 310, and in the gun it's got a, a red filter. Um, top of my head is that a 160, anybody tell me, it's quite fine. Um, red filter, I've thinned the paint down slightly just so it goes through, which um, it does do. I checked on the unit, oh, if I've still got it primed up, yeah, I think you'll just see it. I was spraying it um, just under a thousand, I think it was about 800. I noticed it was just running out of breath slightly. I didn't get any tail, so I just increased it. I've just gone probably just over a thousand now. So um, still controllable, still low pressure, and um, it's gone on nicely. So the 310 spray tip lets a little bit more paint through than the 206 that I've been using, because I've told you in previous videos about the orifice size. Check that out um, in my playlist on, other, on the other videos that I've got. So a little bit more paint goes on. I'm priming it with the Pelmy undercoat. That's gonna dry nicely. We've got heaters on. And then the next stage of this will be nibbing it all down with some fine sandpaper, stopping up, corking up, and then um, we can get a, a first coat of the top coat going on. Hopefully that can be today if it's dry enough. Um, failing that it'll be tomorrow. But fingers crossed it's dry. I can get nibbed down, filled up, and then um, the first coat on. If that dries um, today, it'll have a second coat, I doubt it. We'd be doing that tomorrow, which we can then give a nib down between coats. But yeah, this is second part, um, following on from the mas mastig masking up um, of this room. Yeah, it's been a few hours, but it's also only taken me 10 minutes to spray it. Uh, probably no exaggeration on that. So doing a morning's worth of mas masking up and um, taping up to protect that polished plaster is well worth it. And um, I'll speak to you on the next one where I do um, a top coat of the grey. I believe we're having the grey in this room. So over and out, and I'll go bye for now. Hi, everybody. I make myself look presentable. Hi, everybody. Um, following on from the last video, um, I was telling you I was going to spray the ceiling. So this ceiling's now been sprayed. It's had two coats i.e. two coats being the crosshatch method of going one way and then the other, going from one side to the other, working from the light because that allowed me to actually see um, the wet edge and when I mean wet edge, the wet edge is 
obviously the shininess of the paint against the dryness of the previous paint. So you can see the wet edge coming all the way across. I've just done it in sections, so I did round the outsides, round the curves, across the top, obviously into that um, light well, whatever you want to call it, and then bring these sides down. So that's what I did last, and then I got a coat of the first coat of the Ticarilla um, Helmi 30 on the woodwork. That was the last thing that I did um, in effect yesterday, because this is over two parts, three parts this video. Um, where I was, obviously I'd already spoke about doing the undercoat. I did the undercoat before I did the ceiling, just so drying times wise, I could allow the undercoat to dry. Once the undercoat's dry, then I can go around nibbing down fine um, sandpaper over the whole lot. And when I say fine sandpaper, it's only these, I'll just get them out of my pocket. It's these Merca branded, that's a one, well, I don't know, you can see it. That's a 150 pad. Now, if they're a bit too coarse when you first um, get them out, if you get two of them together and rub them together, that knocks off the grain, well, the grit of the um, sandpaper and makes it a lot smoother. So depending on how smooth you need your sandpaper, that's, that's the key. Just rub it down something to um, make it smoother than what it is when it's new. So that's a, a Merca 150. That's just fine nibbed all the primed woodwork. Once it's all nibbed down, then you can go around just checking any for filling. Bit of cork in the angles. Um, some of the Helmi, I've mentioned it before, Helmi furniture filler, which is great. That can just do any little pin head you see. That dries quite quickly as well, particularly when you've got the heating on. You can just go around and then just nib those down if you see anything just a little bit proud. So yeah, that was all done. That was all dry. And then final thing, as of yesterday, I went around and just got one coat of the... Um, the Helmi 30 on which is in this, you know, should we call it a chocolatey brown colour, I'm not too sure. Now, it goes on thin because obviously I'd got it warm, I was spraying with a gold 206 tip which is pushing the limits of a 206, particularly through uh, my GXFF, I'm probably running nearly 2000, I probably am running 2000 PSI um, to get it through that. The paint was warm to keep it thinner and I added a little bit of water to it as well. So it went through fine, it didn't have any blockages, which is good. Uh, and it went on, let's just say, like a coloured glaze. I'll say no more. Those that know what I mean will know what I mean. It's a coloured glaze. Can you just see it? Yeah, bring it around here. I didn't want it running, so I didn't go over it too many times, if you know what I mean. I go round, it's only a 206. So you make sure it covers as much as you possibly can and move on to the next bit. The part that I could get a, a nice amount of paint on is just the windowsill. Now when I did the primer, let's move out the light. When I did the primer, I used a, a 310 tip, which is obviously putting more paint on, which is great. And that's ideal for the primer coat because that's what you're going to be rubbing down. But for the fine finishing of the woodwork now, I'm actually using the 206. Now the 206 gives a lovely fan pattern. It's not um, it's not too much overspray, so I'm quite happy to work with that again today. What's interesting, where I was yesterday and the day before, I used a 208 tip. Now that sprayed lovely until it got a blockage in it. Rotated the tip round to try and clear the blockage. I couldn't clear it for love no money. I've put it through higher pressure, lower pressure. I've soaked it in mess. I've got it soaked um, currently in some um, gun cleaner, so I'm hoping that that might clear it. If not, that's that's going to be a dead, um, dead spray tip to me. Never mind, it's um, had quite a bit of use. Um, but just be mindful that you can block them and um, not clear it out without the right solutions and thinners. Bearing in mind, uh, the paint I'm spraying with is water-based, so you should be able to wash out and flush with water. I couldn't even flush water through it reversing it one way or the other so that's why i've left it soaking in um, gun cleaner overnight so fingers crossed that might um clear it but we'll wait and see right let's end there um again keep with your thumbs up and your comments and your likes and that malarkey this will be one video all in one so there'll probably be um one more final one after this when i show you what everything is that's finished and the bagging off this room and the green room i'll just show you the green room because that was this is, a, this is a cracking house, this is, just to show you the staircase that I'll be working on later. That is, that is just out of this world. It's just, uh, 
a beautiful house. Right, this is the room that I did the green. Now that was just nibbed down before I put a final coat on. I don't want to rub it too much, but that is lovely. Anybody who says you can get a finish like that with a brush, you don't get a finish like that with a brush. That's a spray finish and that's what we wanted. No brush marks. I don't know whether you can cast, no. Really smooth and that's all the way around. The sill, you can just see that, beautiful finish. Now this will be debagged later. I found out now that these, where the bare plaster is, that's gonna have like a wood cladding over it, but they just want painting over. So um, just for some emulsion that I've got in the other room, I'm just gonna put a coat of emulsion just over those to tidy them up. So it must be a, a light sand over, an emulsion over. Take the skirting, um, just so we protect that. But we're not too worried about that because it's going to be um, cladded over with some finish um, cladding. But that's that for now, and I'll, I'll stop the video here, and then I'll pick up on the next one. So if I give a thumbs up, you'll see the screen that will scroll across, and then we'll pick up from where we left off. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Um, just finish off this um, section of three or four videos all into one on this um, project that we're doing. This is the top floor um, I've been explaining to you over the last couple of days. Ceiling spraying, woodwork spraying. We had a lot of bagging up, uh, taping up of the walls. And the reason being is, I don't know if you can see it, this is a polished plaster finish. It's cost um, quite a bit. So we didn't want to get any spray over it or anything like that. It goes all the way around. There's certain areas that I've just put a couple of coats of emulsion on. Same just here as well. A couple of coats of emulsion, that was bare plaster because that's going to have a, a wood clad finish. Um, so that's not seen. Hence why the, can you see there? I'll just move, see there. The polished plaster finishes. So going all the way around, this is a room that's taken a couple of days. We've sprayed the woodwork. It's got a lovely finish. Ceilings are all sprayed, woodwork, and we're virtually complete. I should think we'll have a little bit of touching up when the units all go in, but this room, I'm virtually signing off. So this is this, back in a minute. Back in the second room, the mirrored rooms really. This is the green, you see? Behind my shoulder, polished plaster, green on the skirting. Now what's interesting, you can see behind me a green wall. Now, that is the same colour, that's the same colour mixed in Johnson's paint as what we've had mixed in Ticarilla, but it's not quite the same and it's supposed to be a, a little green colour. I know our colour on the woodwork virtually matches lovely to the um, little green colour card. But obviously, the green that Johnson's mix up in for little greens, nothing like it. Again, won't matter because it's going to be headboard and cloaked in with wood. So, not to worry about that. Polished plaster, we're done. So, that's it. Two rooms done. We'll be moving on to another tomorrow and next week. So, for now, I'm going to say thumbs up, comments below. Press the bell, subscribe and everything else related to YouTube. Thanks very much. Bye bye.